the much anticipated American Spring for the OWS movement has certainly arrived across the U.S. with tens of thousands pouring onto the streets to renew their protests for justice, equality, peace, and corporate financial accountability, among countless other issues. Peaceful popular protests have been met with shocking police crackdowns and beatings. While there may have been shock among the protesters, there's little evidence of all as Americans rank and file refuse to be intimidated. of spring, the Occupy movement is expected to start returning to the international spotlight after primarily spending the winter months in working groups, planning its locally focused strategies for nonviolent protests and site-based direct action. One major site, of course, is New York City, where, for example, protesters and activists are planning to occupy public space outside the United Nations complex to point out governmental policies that result in environmental degradation. In fact, every Friday afternoon, occupiers there will create spring training marches on New York's Wall Street, as well as hold such marches in other cities in anticipation of a spring full of mass actions directed against economic and social inequality. Banks, board meetings, corporate headquarters, or college and university campuses, and more, are all liable to experience a renewed and recharged Occupy movement. And it intends to do this with its characteristic creativity and, most importantly, another characteristic, good humor. As part of a national campaign toward that philosophy, that nature, hundreds gathered at a local Bank of America branch to protest the bank's ruthless and highly automated housing foreclosures by moving an armoire, coffee table, a number of couches, and a flat screen TV, an entire middle class living room set, onto the sidewalk in front of the bank. After all, Bank of America continues to benefit enormously from its U.S. taxpayer bailout. One participant noted, saying, the bank foreclosed on our homes. We figured we'd move in there. How far will creativity and humor take the movement in its struggle against systemic social and political inequality, corporate control of government, lack of consequences for those who created a global economic crisis, wealth inequality? That is the question. Especially when protesters attempted to mark the movement's six-month anniversary by reoccupying the original 30,000-square-foot protest site of New York's Zuccotti Park, peaceful participants were attacked by the New York Police Department, protesters and witnesses alike describing it as a police riot, a term that hasn't been used in America in more than four decades. When the brutality of Chicago's police was in full view in 1968. medics here at the occupation of Wall Street. Um, I was arrested on the big action on March 17th after everyone got uh, violently evicted from Liberty Square. Um, a group of probably a couple hundred people started marching on the streets. And, um, yeah, we were marching for maybe an hour and a half and not a lot was happening. The police were fairly aggressive um, as, as they kind of were that night. Um, but nobody had been arrested yet. Uh, and then maybe 20 feet in front of me, as we were walking on the sidewalk, um, somebody started to be arrested um, by a couple of police officers. Uh, the rest of the march continued, like, marching up towards that um, arrest that was happening. And next thing I knew, I had a couple of hands on me, and they just threw me into a wall, um, threw a couple of uh, punches into my face, bloodied my nose a little bit, and then... Um, uh, swung me around and slammed my head into the glass door. Stay 
then they kind of swung around and we could all see when I looked up I saw a line of flashing cameras and uh, media people standing there so these two these two scooter police who had arrested me they I think they were kind of upset that they seemed kind of upset at least um, that they couldn't keep beating me up so they as they were putting their handcuffs on me they made sure to cuff me with my wrists all backwards and improper so that it, it hurts a lot um, and then just yanked these uh, these plastic ties they have yanked them as tight as they can it was three days ago which you might be able to see just a little bit of some of the scarring that's just from a plastic band that was wrapped that tight tight enough to actually uh, cut my skin uh, on my wrist um, so my hands still a little bit numb um, when I was arrested on January 1st, again on the streets, uh, on the sidewalk, it was the same kind of thing. Officers very aggressive, and they made a point both the, at both of those arrests to not just like tie, uh, put these zip ties on enough to make sure they were secure, but once they were secure, they then went ahead and just grabbed it and yanked on it with their full strength with two hands. I had a feeling it might be your What's your name? Jared. Jared. What does uh, bouncing back to Occupy Wall Street mean? It means we're coming back stronger than ever right now. Things are heating up. The Republicans have been out on the field, uh, really scaring the entire country. Uh, and we're back out. We're back out to oppose a lot of it. Wall Street Green is dead! Three days after the police attack, the occupiers organized another peaceful march to speak out against police brutality. African Americans, Muslim Americans, indeed all kinds of Americans, gathered to do just that. Publicly reject the threat of constant violence as had just been committed. An assault not only on their persons as citizens, but on the guarantees of the U.S. Constitution itself. With the loop around the park! With the loop around the park! Please keep it tight! Please keep it tight! And fill in behind the banner! And fill in behind the banner! The following day, police attacked again. This time at New York's Union Square, another public space. Some of their victims requiring hospitalization for the severity of their injuries incurred evidently for no other reason than to refuse to leave America's idea of freedom of peaceful assembly in the dust. Police abruptly close a public park which has never been closed throughout the past 20 years. For all the openly positive and peaceful attitude of the occupiers, the week was the most extreme example of intimidation and violence the movement has yet encountered in its six-month life. Indeed, any political protest movement of any duration in America since the 1960s. Police brutality has a history in the U.S. Before its Vietnam-era anti-war protests, before the lunch counter sit-ins of its civil rights movement, both socio-political direct democracy movements, and both of which were guided by principles of nonviolence at their core, opposed to government misbehavior, misrepresentation, and outright criminal abuse. Labor strikes in the 1930s, protesting exploitation and inhuman working conditions in America's factories. Uh, my name is Sean Carrier. I was arrested on March 17th. Uh, in Liberty Square with uh, 70 of my really good friends. Um, it was our six month anniversary and it was just a really great day in the park. Uh, a lot of really great energy, people celebrating a birthday, really. Um, probably around midnight, I noticed that um, police were just garrisoning. They were lining up, getting into you know, militant formation, just amassing on the north and the east sides of the park. They were coming in to move us out, and before I knew it, the police were just rushing in on all sides. These inhuman robots coming in and stomping through us and picking people apart like machines, and just on a sea of police just viciously grabbing people and throwing them around and just without any regard or order or just, you know, if somebody was too difficult to pick up, they just went and grabbed another one and then came back for them later and 
I just remember looking up and seeing all of that chaos around me. I mean, when they came for me and the people next to me, it was really, really brutal. I mean, I got pulled apart. I got thrown on the ground. I got choked by this scarf that I'm wearing. Uh, an officer took my thumb, grabbed it and bent it back and I snapped and I screamed like I've never screamed before and he dropped me on the ground and I looked at him and I said you just broke my thumb and he grabbed me again and grabbed my thumb and bent it back again and it snapped and he took it even further it was like in the opposite position of where it was now and as if that wasn't enough I got my head just stepped on and my head was on the pavement and somebody was just stepping on my head putting so much pressure on so you have scar on your on your on your mandible on your cheek yeah this is where your jaw this is where the boot was, and this is where the ground was, right here. And just putting so much force on my head, and I remember it happened in slow motion, that like I felt the boot come off, and I was like, oh, okay, the boot is off my face. And then a millisecond later, it slammed down on the ground twice, really quick. And, and I think I lost consciousness for a few minutes and I was just done with and they picked me up and dragged me over to this pen where you know there was just a pile of us like ragged remains just tossed there my name is Alex uh, I'm an occupier and I was present when the police raided again Zuccotti Park on this weekend and um, I went there just to see how beautiful the park was because we were receiving notices that we, they had like over a thousand people at the park and that was like wow since the end of, of, of fall we don't have as many people there and when I got there it was indeed like the whole park had all these people, all these faces that shared moments, that fought in struggle, that occupied, that were creative with you. And it was really emotional, it was really beautiful. And we did a, a capoeira roda, we played, we danced. And out of nowhere, like a band, a marching band, uh, like a St. Saint, Saint, uh, Saint Patrick's marching band just came being beautiful, triumphant, and everyone was like crazy, like super happy. And the, the police, of course, could not take that, so they cracked the band down, started surrounding the park and preparing to, to sweep us out. So we resisted, we created a blockade in the east, a huge banner, we occupy, we are the 99%. And um, they just announced that they were coming in, and they did pull the banner, ripped it apart, started hitting people with their batons, with pushing people, and uh, we immediately like sat down, made a sit-in, locked arms, and. They just saw over a hundred people locked and they knew that they would have some trouble moving because we were not about to move. And so they did. They started hitting people with the batons as their arms were locked. They started kicking people in the arms where the arms were locked to hurt them and make the, 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 lock, the lockdown easier to pull. And they just started throwing people chucking people on the ground, three officers, boots on faces, knees on throats, and pulling women through their hair, 
holding the necks with their hands, choking people. The percentages may differ with degrees of accountability and legal resource. But America's police departments are populated with brutalizers nonetheless, thugs with too small a mentality for human rights on the one hand and too much power in a closed peer group on the other. Decent members of which take their vacation seriously and are both demeaned and intimidated by such colleagues for the sake of an otherwise necessary career, just as demeaned and intimidated as the public is for the sake of its safety. While it hardly describes noble notions of democracy, the average American seems to generally prefer to believe that police brutality is any other nation's problem where people don't look like them, not theirs. That if violence occurs in theirs, it must be first an isolated aberration, something that does not occur as in New York within three days of each incident. And it must surely be at the instigation of a peaceful dissenter whose only weapon is civil disobedience and humor. My name is Jessica Rex Schaefer, and uh, I've been doing I've been doing activism in New York for quite a while, um, and uh, I've been arrested a number of times, and so of course each one is different. Um, and I've been arrested roughly uh, too many times, and so. Um, in this and and I have lots of stories about those. Now, what happened on around happened around two between two and two thirty on March on March seventeenth, and we were on the northeast side um, of of Zuccotti Park, and there were a lot of cops pushing us. Um, we were on the sidewalks very much on the sidewalks, and the cops were pushing at us and pushing at us, shouting, shouting, move, move. And, um, and we weren't sure, sure why they were pushing us off the sidewalk. Then there were a couple of people, and they were dancing, and they started shouting, dance for democracy, dance for democracy. And the cops quickly grabbed them. There was like, one guy who was sitting on a truck, which was his truck, which he was sitting on top of, and the cops were angry at that. And um, and they were arresting. They were doing the grabby, grabby thing. In my case, they were pushing, and um, there was no place to go really, even though they were pushing. So then I was suddenly grabbed, and I was pulled through the police line, and I was dragged, and I ended up at the bottom of what I feel was a police. Pile up. While I was being dragged, one cop grabbed me by the hair, and he grabbed me uh, like, like grabbing me by the hair like this, and and pulling me down. And I hit the pavement. I still have a bruise on my head. Like this is all like like very tender. There's like a big bruise here, which is covered by my hair. And then they shouted, "Stop resisting! Stop resisting!" I shouted, "I'm not resisting! I'm not resisting!" And then they started doing crazy things with my hands and my wrists. And one of them took my right wrist and pulled it down as hard as he could. And um, and I screamed. And then there was just agony. The only thing I felt was pain in my wrists. Now I've had three wrist surgeries, and um, and so I'm very my wrists. My I'm very careful about my wrists. And what they did, um, put it was just it was beyond. It was really extraordinarily painful. And I started screaming like a banshee. And um, the cops put on the flex cuffs on, and they put them on um, incredibly tight. And I was screaming and screaming and screaming, and they put me in the paddy wagon, and I was still screaming and screaming and screaming. Uh, I was screaming at the top of my lungs, and I could barely even talk. And I managed to eke out to one to eke out. I've had three wrist surgeries. Get them off. And the other, the other people who were also in the wagon, fortunately, also started screaming as well to get them off.